Hey everybody, it's that time of year again. That's right, it's time for pain mess. We all celebrate different things at this time of the year, but pain is universally felt by all around this time, and frankly, it's the only thing I can feel these days. So, in order to help fuel the pain for everyone, I've slashed yearly membership prices over at patreon.com slash charlatanwonder as low as they'll go. So if you pledge yearly during the rest of this month, you'll get two months free of early access to videos, 4K cat clips. Okay, okay, my little helper wants to go. He's upset. You know what? That's fair. Okay, I'll take it off you. Hey, hey. It's off. You good? So if you choose to pledge by the end of the year, you'll get two months of early access to videos, 4K cat videos, and a special role in the Discord for free. And as an added bonus, I'll send you a pain miss card to your real address, straight from the untextured void, or as I'm beginning to call it, the pain zone. That's right, you'll get a card of this deranged lunatic in a red suit and his little kitty helper sent straight to your domicile for free. All right, everyone, links in the description. Merry pain mess. So it's been about a year since I did the big immersive sim video. I remember being so optimistic about 2020 and how it was going to be a great year for immersive sims. If only I had known what was coming in the next 365 days. Back then, we went over the rise, fall, death, and rebirth of the immersive sim, or at least what I thought was going to be the rebirth of the immersive sim, but then everything went to hell this year. So, as a preface, I know that a sizable portion of this video is going to be very doom and gloom, but the way I see it, 2020 is the year of the free pass. I was originally going to do my follow-up on Star Citizen this year, and lord knows there's been plenty of stuff in the last two years or so to lampoon CIG for, but I'm holding off as everyone's mired in delays and complications this year, as I don't know if any of you have been out and about lately, but from what I'm told, the world is near literally imploding. Personally, I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that once we're well into 2021, everyone gets back on their feet so that we can get some M-Sims that we were expecting this year. I'm splitting all the immersive sims since the big immersive sim video into four categories. What's still in development? What's in dev hell or just outright cancelled? What actually came out? And what's been added to my radar since the video went live last December? Unfortunately, some of these categories are gonna be a bit brief. So let's start out with what's still in development. First off, there's a System Shock remake being made by Night Dive, which from this point on I'm going to refer by its executable, System Reshock. System Reshock is still coming along and they've really fleshed out that demo level into something that's really playable, and as of recently they've shown off what the cyberspace segments are going to look like, and it's not too bad if I do say so myself. The Steam page still says 2020 for the release date, but unless Stefan Kick is able to implement time dilation at their studio, I don't think that's gonna happen. I'm not sure about 2021 at this rate either, but again, 2020 has been the year of the enormous setback, so it's expected. If anything, I'm just happy they're still chugging along on the remake, all things considered. Aside from time, I don't think we really have to worry about this one too much, since the development of System Reshock is being done by Night Dive, who still has a steady stream of work from updating and remastering old 90s games for GOG. But I'm still now expecting to play the final version, um, sometime maybe in early 2022, if I had to guess. They're still updating that playable demo that they have on Steam, if you'd like to get a feel for how far they've come so far, or if you've already played it, it might be worth your time to give it another go-round because it's come quite a bit. Up next is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Just to catch everyone up who uh, was in cryostasis up until this very moment, while VTMB2 was already delayed into 2020 when we last talked about it, it got delayed again to mid-2020, and then again into sometime in 2021 now. Now, you might have already heard this from me if I ended up giving enough of a damn to make that Cyberpunk 2077 predictions video, but my personal rule for game delays is that one is fine, Two is concerning, and if we get a third delay in a game's release schedule, it's time to take all of your expectations and place the bar squarely on the floor. Just be happy if it comes out in a finished playable state at all. 
Additionally, in between these delay announcements, we saw a bit of VTMB2 at a con and the combat looked just as hokey as ever. Personally, I think hokey combat is a staple of Vampire the Masquerade, but I guess others didn't feel that way, so we've got more of those delays. Look, I just want to explode people with their own blood and enjoy my newfound pyramid-free life. Another development in Bloodlines 2's development was that the original writer of the series, Brian Mitsoda, left production citing that his work had been done. While some are worried about about that, I'm not, because if anything, it means the game is likely story complete, and now the remaining writers are just there to make sure everything fits right in the end. As I write this in late November, the estimated release date for VTMB2 is still just 2021, but developer Hardsuit Labs is still keeping us in the loop with occasional dev diaries and updates. Like I said before, 2020 has been a tough year, and any progress made during the pandemic is commendable. My expectations are still firmly placed on the floor, and I'll just be happy if I get my game in 2021. It's Vampire the Masquerade. You, you expect jank. We also got some information about Rafael Colantonio's now-named project that is Studio, Wolfi. It's called Weird West, and it's going to be an isometric, story-driven game following three major characters. Personally, from what I've seen uh, so far, I'd say that Weird West looks a bit more like a CRPG with a boatload of kitchen sink design than it does an immersive sim, but I could be wrong here, as I haven't exactly had a chance to play something that's still in the middle of development. Weird West is slated for some time in 2021, but other than that, there's not much about a release or what to expect from the game. I'll gladly take my time with this one once I get a chance, but aside from a few dev vlogs, we don't really know all that much about the game, so I think it's best to just be patient here. As for the Bioshock series, one of the few silver linings of 2020 was that we finally got a definitive answer that the next Bioshock game is in production. It's being made by one Cloud Chamber Games, which is comprised of series veterans plus a few other high caliber members of talent, and it's being headed up by Firaxis veteran Kelly Gilmore. There's no release date, no trailers, or even a title for this Bioshock game, but it's better than nothing. The There's Always a Lighthouse ARG has gone effectively nowhere since we last checked up on it earlier in this year so maybe that was something set up by Blind Squirrel, which never came to fruition since I don't think they're really working on Bioshock anymore, at least to my knowledge. Now, apparently, the Parkside project was indeed a thing for a while, but that version of Bioshock 3 or 4, or whatever they call it, is non-existent now. In the end, all it did was add even more apprehension to those poor guys at Hangar 13 who worked next to it, and kept wondering why the mystery project next door got buckets of money and everything it could ever possibly need while they just twisted in the wind. Speaking of shock games, narrowly avoiding the it's officially stuck in dev hell category is Ken Levine's still unnamed, still unseen project. The only reason why this isn't in dev hell is because a little bit of information came out in how 2K is hiring a senior position with the objective of helping finalize a project at Ken Levine's Ghost Story Games. Ken Levine also did a talk for some sort of award show, and as much as I love the guy's work, Ken Levine effectively said nothing for 30 minutes straight. I'll link the whole talk in the description if you really want to watch it, but watching the talk really isn't worth your time if you're itching to know what's going on at Ghost Story games. Even if it is in the final stages of development and soon to be released, you'd think we've seen like something by now, especially with the opportunity given to tentpole off the launch of the latest generation of gaming consoles. I don't know, maybe they're gonna try and pull some sort of come out of nowhere, full release with no announcement in an attempt to engineer some sort of media hurricane around whatever they've been doing since at least late 2013. It's also entirely possible that I and everyone else misread that whole hiring a senior position to help finalize the game thing, not so much as they're almost done, but as 2K wants someone to go in there and make them finish the game already. But again, we don't know because there's just so little information about this game. Lastly, we've got Arcane's Deathloop which I have no reason to believe that it's not an immersive sim since it's arcane. Presently, Deathloop is in the most advanced stage of development out of all of these games and has a specific release window with an estimated release of June 2021. We've got some details about the plot and we've even got what looks like some actual gameplay in the trailers they've released, so I'm not too worried about this one because, again, it's arcane. They don't mess around. So I fully admit that if I had been less lenient on some of the games in the previous section, this section would be a whole lot bigger. But you gotta have hope when it comes to immersive sims as they tend to not have the best of luck. I'll also concede that the three games I've decided to include in the dev hell section of this video could all be disputed, but I decided that these three circumstances were just too troubling to be considered progress as usual. 
Heck, VTMB2 and System Reshock could be here too depending on where you choose to draw the line. First of those who have found themselves on the precipice of development hell is System Shock 3. I say it like that because it's on the razor's edge of still being in development, but it's had a very rocky year. We haven't heard anything from other side in quite a while. Earlier this year, it came out that money for development had dried to a trickle, and it was essentially just Warren Spector and Paul Nuroff working on the title. Big bummer. Then there was a brief but somewhat troubling ray of hope when it came out that Tencent had stepped in to become the producer of System Shock 3, and they were gonna just let Other Side Entertainment do their thing. This was all very iffy because for one, it's Tencent, they're kinda sketchy by nature, however, they'd never really done any sort of single player game before. At least for me, it was hopeful that maybe Tencent just wanted a prestige project so that their uh, reputation out in the west might be uh, a bit improved, but reputations are a very hard thing to repair, and it's likely that just one very good single player game wouldn't be enough. But this was all for naught as uh, an executive order came through in the United States saying that Tencent wasn't allowed to do what it was doing in the US anymore. However, the order primarily applied to the social media apps WeChat and TikTok for their social media nature, and System Shock 3 doesn't exactly fit that criteria. And if anything, they're still having trouble implementing this order, since it seems that the only thing more enticing than biting down on a Tide Pod is giving all of your personal information to a megacorp with close ties to a government that doesn't exactly have the best record on human rights or freedom of information, so that you can do funny walking in place memes while you move your mouth. I only bring this up because aside from what's overtly said in the executive orders and official government statements, I get a strong feel from all of this that it's supposed to be something of a pressure tactic to try and get Tencent to disvest itself of American-based properties so that American companies can come in and buy them up on the cheap. I'm calling this one an inch away from dev hell because while System Shock 3 isn't overtly on hold, cancelled, and it still does technically have a producer, we've heard exactly nothing from Other Side Entertainment for quite a long time. In fact, the last we heard from anyone there is this forum post by a community manager a few months before the executive order was made, saying that things are back on track, but it's going to be radio silence for a while. Perhaps they showed us the game far too early, and now they're stuck eating a bit of crow while they scramble to get it to the point where they should have been at before showing System Shock 3 off. If any work is being done on System Shock 3, it's being done very slowly and essentially with no public outreach. One last thing to keep in mind about System Shock 3 is that the new producers, Tencent, also own a large stake in Epic Games. So, it's going to be very surprising if System Shock 3 isn't an Epic Games Store exclusive when the time comes for it to launch. Then there's everyone's favorite, this looks so good at first, but now I'm extremely wary of it title, Atomic Heart. When we last heard from them in the Imsim video, it came out that management didn't know what they were doing, and the game was effectively being started over or in dev hell depending on who you asked, and there hasn't been much to change that idea. Last I checked, they're still somewhat active on Facebook, Twitter, and they even uploaded to their YouTube channel with a gameplay teaser that looked like an actual human was playing this time. However, we haven't seen too much meaningful progress on the game aside from how now Mick Gordon was scoring that particular trailer. However, I looked into it and I couldn't find anything that definitively says if Gordon is or is not going to score the whole game. There's been some articles that have assumed that, but nowhere on official media does it say that Mick Gordon is now doing the music for anything beyond that particular gameplay trailer. I know that there was a big stink with Mick Gordon having a big falling out with Bethesda Softworks after Doom Eternal, and if you want my take on that, it's not going to be here. While the situation seems simple at first, there's a lot going on and I don't want to derail this video too much now since I've already done it a couple times already. They also, for a while, were soliciting pre-orders up to a $90 Super Sextra Special Consumer Edition, which I personally felt was in very poor taste, as the release date on Atomic Heart is still quote-unquote TBD. And I think they must have eventually felt that that was in poor taste too, as you can no longer pre-order it on their website. They've also removed the dev blogs from the website proper, which is kind of troubling, especially since, aside from that new level where somebody fought and died to a thing, such to Mick Gordon's music, we haven't exactly seen all that much from Atomic Heart's development since mid-2019. If you were holding your breath for this one, I'd say it's time to exhale. Lastly, we've got Deus Ex in Dev Hell. After the abysmal reception to Marvel's Avengers, which now they're desperately fast-tracking content for that game just to get people to play it, and not even six months into the game's release and it's over 50% off sale right now, or exactly 50% off, excuse me, uh, whatever's coming for Mankind Divided, 
is it really coming anytime soon? We still haven't had any meaningful updates as to what's happening with the franchise. There was Deus Ex Go, which is essentially Hitman Go with a Deus Ex coat of paint. But other than that, the last we heard from Deus Ex was when Squeenix CEO Matsuda swore up and down that Deus Ex series was quote unquote waiting its turn and that they hadn't abandoned it entirely. I give it six months after the release of Avengers before we hear something from Squeenix, and it, they're now officially on the back foot when it comes to any of their Western properties. Part of me wouldn't be surprised if Squeenix tries to cop out and say that after the loss they took on Avengers, they just aren't in the position to make something like Deus Ex. And part of me wouldn't be surprised if in a bid to save face with their Western audience, they announce it anyway. Uh, a big part of me also hopes that Eidos Montreal pulls an IO Interactive and goes solo, taking Deus Ex with them. There's been rumors that Squeenix might try selling off their Western IPs as they've begun to accept that they just don't know what they're doing with them. But those are just that, rumors. I wouldn't put too much stock into them as all we know now for certain is that Square Enix said they were going to finish up the Deus Ex Jensen trilogy. However, they said that four years ago and we haven't seen anything. All right, folks, it's time for an anti-sponsor. I've been saving this one for a special occasion. For those of you that are new to the channel, this is a segment where we lampoon a sketchy sponsorship offer I've received in the name of all the good folk who support this channel over at patreon.com slash charlatanwonder. This one might be a little longer than usual, but it's totally cool if you skip it. These guys have been bugging me for two friggin' years. Well. They were until I blew them out back in August, and since then I've effectively got them off my back. These guys have been propositioning me since right after I did that Star Citizen video back in July of 2018. This is most likely because the most polite way to describe the game they wanted to pay me to show off would be to call it a Star Citizen copycat. I initially followed up with these guys as I was genuinely interested, being very new to the world of questionable deals at the time, and even went as far as to reply to them and inquire about specifics for what they wanted from an ad deal. And nothing. They ghosted me on their own proposition. Did I say something wrong? Was I too eager? I didn't know. But I tried not to let it beat me up and I moved on to making more videos at the time. But then what do you know? A couple months later, they emailed me again as if nothing had happened. I thought that maybe they got mixed up or something, so I told them they'd already emailed me earlier and they never got back to me. But I was still open to doing something with them. Crickets again. This ended up happening every couple months or so for the next two years. After their most recent outreach of what would eventually be our final conversation, and unless they are going to start up again in six months or so instead of the usual two, uh, I went to check out their website as I'd already seen their Steam page and nothing had really changed there since the first time I took a look at that. I'm not sure why I was surprised at the dumpster fire I saw. I guess they really wanted to have that Star Citizen-like aesthetic as they hadn't even bothered to finished their website yet. I can't show you too much as anti-sponsors are anonymous, but they had one of those little charts meant to show the language support and their progress they made on each respective language. Now, normally you put little dots there to show what has and has not been accomplished yet, but there was literally nothing. I guess they presently aren't supporting any kind of language in game. The whole site is filled with little gems like that. Maybe a feature that they should work on is actually having something to show before throwing money at YouTubers in hopes that their influence can override scrutiny at their extremely unfinished, well, everything. There was also a bunch of dead legs and stuff too, last I checked. So about that last email. I know this anti-sponsor has already been going on for a bit, but I've been waiting a long time to tear into these guys. So just bear with me or jump ahead if this ain't your thing. This email was one of the worst they'd sent me in the last two years and their emails were bad, but this was egregiously sloppy and boilerplate. I'm reading through it and I noticed two things. One, all of these emails over the last two years have all been sent by the same dude. So there's no chance that this has been an inter-office communication issue or a problem with a lazy PR firm because this guy was apparently from the company. And two, this guy couldn't even be bothered to sign his emails. Like not even a basic auto signature. And they had this big fancy HTML graphic email thing showing off their extremely unfinished game, which included in a like little sincerely part where you'd sign at the end. He couldn't be bothered to type his name into the part where it should have gone. It was at this point I decided to just 
go and clown on this guy. Here's a little excerpt from the email. You've been emailing me about this for two years now. The kicker is I even responded to a few of those emails with my interest and then never heard back from you. Out of the 10 emails you have sent me since July of 2018, I think I've replied to three or four and never heard back from you unless it was another boilerplate mail merge in my inbox. While I might be interested in making videos on behalf of your game at this point, I have serious doubts about your professional organizational skills. If you can't remember who you're emailing when, how are you going to remember to send payment? Additionally, my videos take considerably more time and effort than what can be done with two videos in the span of a week. Especially if I need to get around 40 hours of playtime in so that I might understand what potential players might experience. Am I supposed to stop sleeping and spending time with my family in order to make these videos up to par? Or shall I just play the game for an hour and make something atrociously sloppy that will harm both your game and my channel? I threw out a number that I knew they weren't going to pay for so that just on the off chance they did want to go through this, I'd get six months of rent out of shilling for this turd. And then I left a little, I find it helpful to include the signature block on the mail merge setup so that it at least feels like someone tried to send me a unique email at the end to try and get through to them that I wasn't taking them seriously anymore. But then without missing a beat, I got a reply from this goon. Good afternoon. Thank you for your reply. We need the first video next week and can pay $700 for it. If it can be done, then we are ready to go and make a payment through PayPal. Best regards. Well, at least he was remembering to sign his emails now. I'll admit that 700 bucks for a trash quality video was tempting for all of two seconds before I just lost it at the guy and realized that if this was what it was like getting them to communicate with me, how was it going to be getting them to pay me? I left him with, if you want a YouTuber to vomit out a trash quality video within a week of installing your game, please look elsewhere. Best of luck to you and your Star Citizen knockoff. I believe that one day you might be able to make something worth me making a video of about paid or not with enough help. Just like how you remember to sign your email this time around. And then I promptly blocked him. I rejected this goon and the many others like him thanks to the support I receive at patreon.com slash charlatanwonder where patrons get early access to video, 4K cat clips, a special role in the Discord channel, and if you pledge yearly during the month of December, you'll get two months for free and a painless card. If you can't or won't, that's totally cool. I'll still be putting out these videos as best I can, as fast as I can for all of you to enjoy regardless. Now that I've gotten this out of my system, let's get back to immersive of Sims. So what's actually came out since the big immersive sim video went live late last year? Nothing! Out of all the games I was watching that I put in that video, none of the up and comers have made it to release. Now before you mention it, I'm aware that some of you are curious about if Cyberpunk 2077 counts as an immersive sim, as one of you has asked me that question every 90 minutes for the last year now, and the answer at the time of writing, recording, and editing this is that I have no way of knowing because the game isn't out yet. I gotta be honest though, from what I've seen from the leaks, it looks a lot like Grand Theft Auto played in first person, except you've got Deus Ex style cutscenes with the occasional skill check thrown in. If you yourself have seen the leaks though, which I obviously can't show you, well for one it's very early in the game, and for another, the guy playing it wasn't exactly the best representation of a competent game player, and there's not a lot shown in the video thanks to this guy farting around. A few days after that leak, CDPR went and cobbled together a trailer of PS4 and PS5 footage that showed the same areas as the leaker did, but I don't know if you guys have noticed this about the trailers, but they've been putting out a lot of quote unquote gameplay trailers that don't show a lot of gameplay. I guess we'll know for certain in about negative two days from this video going live. Aside from that, the only immersive sim to actually come out since I made this video is none other than Brigand Oaxaca. No, really. The dev sent me a key right after the MSIM video went live, and I intentionally held off on checking it out since it was early access at the time. And if I'm remembering this right, lord knows that was a fitting turn back then. Since then, they've patched a lot and have moved far beyond the haha funny jank game. 
but they're still the winner of MSIM of 2020 since they're literally the only ones that have really made it at the time of recording this. The game is still very much a work in progress, but it's still something that you can play. The game is also insanely cheap at $6 when it isn't on sale, so the risk for trying this out is very, very low. I really wish that this entire section was a lot longer than it was, but 2020's been a rough year. I'm just happy that most of these games aren't outright cancelled and only a small select few can be considered overtly in dev hell. On the bright side of things, a few immersive sims have cropped up on my radar since the release of the M-Sim video, and while none of them aside from Brigand Oaxaca are out, all three have playable demos now and Actually, I had this video done and uploaded on Tuesday, but the Graven demo dropped Wednesday morning, so here I am redoing this part of the video so that you guys get the best information. And best of all, none of the troubling signs that the other games still in development have featured in this video earlier are present here in these new up-and-comers. The first and most obvious of which is Gloomwood. Gloomwood is made by Taffer King, who worked on Dusk before this and is going to be a new blood title. It's very thief-esque, save for how violence is an option you're supposed to consider in Gloomwood, and various systems seem a bit deeper than the Thief series. Gloomwood has a full-blown demo out that's even been patched a couple times to help improve the experience, and while there's no real release date as well, it's a New Blood game, uh, regardless, Taffer King has been very active and they've been showing progress on the game even as I write this, even if some of it was a result of producer meddling. All in all, Gloomwood looks very, very promising, and hopefully a nice rest for my finger joints after getting through Ultra Kill. Gloomwood's not even out yet, however it's still very immersive sim in that it suffered from all the alleged immersive sim curses. Earlier during this year, during the PC gaming show, the guy running the thing forgot to put Gloomwood's trailer in along with all the rest of the upcoming New Blood games, and on top of that, they spelled the vanity URL wrong. To make matters even worse, while they did eventually get the trailer in at the very end of the show as like a surprise trailer instead of just owning up to what they did, a lot of people thought the surprise was going to be something else and got a little upset thanks to that confusion. At least none of this directly affects the development of the game and it's just very, very unfortunate. You can check out the Gloomwood demo on Steam or by going to thiefwithguns.com. However, be aware that the latter choice feeds Dave Ostry's crippling addiction to vanity URLs. After Gloomwood, we've got Graven. Graven doesn't have a full-blown release date yet, but we've seen enough of the game to know that it's coming along just fine, and we even just got a playable demo out now that's a good hour's worth of gameplay. The game is a bit more action-y than other M-Sims, and it wears its boomer shooter roots on its sleeves as it's got all the floating pickups, jibbing, and being able to move really, really fast. The demo gives you a nice suite of magical and physical abilities to play around with in just about every box, corpse, or wooden gate is breakable, or better yet, flammable. There's a good deal of exploration to do in this starting level, and if you aren't feeling it, you can always just buy the weapons instead of discovering where they're all hidden. I found that the demo was pretty forgiving overall, but I still had a very good time with it. Also, is it just me, or is this intro bit very reminiscent of the Warhammer 40,000 Mechanicus intro? A pious man among pious men. Our priest of the orthogonal order humbly walks the parallel path, following the Creator through service. Father, to from the moment I understood the weakness of my flesh, it disgusted me. I craved the strength and certainty of steel. Finally, we've got that game whose name I butchered in the Avengers video. Parapedia. Parapedia is developed by two or three guys, Shodanon and Snakedist, and I think there might be one other guy over in Poland. And full disclosure, I'm on friendly terms with Shodanon since he's a regular in my Discord. Parapedia is slated to come out in August of 2021, and they recently got their Steam page together and put out a demo that you can go play right now. Parapedia's got that big PS1 energy, and everything looks very grungy and grainy, which fits in with the setting as this takes place 
place in a dystopian cyberpunk Poland. You play as an anime girl, which I know some of you have been fiending for pretty hard since Near Automata. The available demo is a single mission, which should give you a feel for how the game operates in its current state. I found the inventory management to be particularly interesting, and I will not be stopped from putting Lennon's head in my inventory. parapedia has got a Discord already set up where the devs are very active, and if you're interested in cyberpunk anime girls or the game, maybe swing by and keep tabs on the game's development. So like I said in the beginning of this video, 2020 has been the year of a free pass for games since it's been pretty hard on everyone, niche game developers especially. I'm hoping that 2021 is the year that we beat COVID and allow ourselves to get back on track with, well, everything. So far for 2021, we've got VTMB2, Parapedia, Graven, Deathloop, and hopefully a few others that are coming out next year. So maybe 2021 is going to be the year that we all thought 2020 was going to be before all of this mess. In the near future, we're going to have ourselves a better look at some of the other immersive sims such as I, Divine Cybermancy, Postal 2, and if it even is an M-Sim, and maybe the Deus Ex prequels. I'm thinking I might start covering Deus Ex like I covered Bioshock back in the day, you know? Build up an all-encompassing library on the Tomic and be the go-to guy for a bit. But come to think of it, aside from a compare and contrast between System Shock 2 and Bioshock, I never did a video on Bioshock proper. Maybe there's something to do there. And of course, we're going to have all the indie spookies I can get my hands on. I know you guys love the indie spookies, and believe it or not, I'm already getting ready for Halloween in July 2021 and Indie Ween 2021, so that we can go big. You might not see a lot of me come January, as January is a bad month for ad revenue, so if there was ever a time for me to take a little vacation, it'd be around then. But I'll still have at least one or two videos for you guys so that you don't start getting the shakes. I want to give a big thank you to all of my patrons. And remember, if you were thinking about pledging, now's the time to do it as I've slashed my yearly prices as low as they'll go. And anyone who pledges for the year until the end of this month gets a pain miss card on top of early access to videos, 4K cat clips, special roles in the Discord, and all the best of helping to fight the good fight against terrible sponsors and sketchy brand deals. In the meantime, stay safe, stay indoors, wear your mask, and practice social distancing when you have to go out, wash your hands, and enjoy this cat video. Saucy boy, why are you staring at daddy on his machine? At least one of us is trying to deal with all the weight we gained in the last three months, thanks to all the moving and stuff. And I should really, I should zoom this out because I'm not exactly a stable camera operating source right now. You've been sitting there for what? Oh, that doesn't even make it better if I try to stabilize it. Sitting there for what? 20 minutes now just staring at me? Yo, weirdo. Like, come on, bud. I'm gonna get you, like, a cat hamster wheel. Like, that's the next patron thing we buy for you. We're getting you a big old hamster wheel, and that's where we're gonna put your snacks. Wait, what's so interesting out there? It's nothing. The blinds are closed. Don't you look away. You gotta, you gotta be healthier, because we want you to live a long time. If you die young, that's gonna be a lot of snacks you're missing out on. More little, come on. You were just so interested in staring at me and then staring at nothing in particular. All right, fine. We'll talk about this later. 